Um, see, that's it. See, the racket closes back here and then opens by itself, which is great because as the racket is coming to the contact, the players hit below the center. They don't hit in the center, they hit way below, you know, and then as it comes into contact, this side is coming in contact, so it gives you more power. The old toss pin, which was going this other way, this side separated a little bit, went backwards a little bit, so you get less power. Modern toss pin is the racket closed, and it opens a little bit and comes across. But the key is coming across. This is why you compare tennis with martial arts. Because in martial arts, if you're going to hit here, when you get here, you pull it. You know, also when you break piece of wood, you're going down here and then you pull it. Pulling you know, versus, versus, versus pushing. Versus trying to go through. Right. Yeah, the guys don't go through to break the wood or the bricks. You know, they get there and then they pull it towards them. It's very hard. But the change of direction is the acceleration. Right. Because there was no acceleration this way. And here the same. All the acceleration as you're going towards the ball, Although a lot of the top players, especially further, go slow to the ball, but all the acceleration occurs sideways, across like this. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more power. Here, extend your arms a little bit. Okay, push my finger. See, there's no power Nothing. there. But grab my finger in, in my hand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Here is where the power is, right here in the biceps, the triceps. It connects your body you know, to the impact, and you get a lot more speed on the ball. That's why you see some extremities of players hitting a ball and maybe even ending up like this. Absolutely. That's the key. Yep. Randy, now we should show what to do, you know, to recuperate from a stroke and how you hit when you're on the run. Okay. Yeah, unless you're on the run and you have to continue running, you know, you try to finish the shot anyway. But this is the way. I do it with this cone. This is what I taught in Spain and was, was so successful. You put this cone, you make people run, hit and turn, you know, and actually they stop on the outside foot and they pull it back in. See? So let me do a few from here and then I'm going to feed your balls from right there. Okay. Now you're going to turn around the cone and just come over here and just hit up. That's the way. So people should notice how you're stopping on this foot and coming across like this to aid your arm. Good, now go down the line, same thing. Really pull across. That's what you're going to make the shot safe. Pull across, across, there you go. <coughs> That's it, the minute you steer it, you're in trouble. Across, there you go. <coughs> See, you steer a little bit. Across the ball, so it gets more spin. Oh, that's not enough. So even more. A lot more. There you go. So your arm has to come to your left. Good. More. Find it and to your left. Good. Very well done. Oscar, what's the difference between conventional teaching and what you're preaching? Okay. The way I'm preaching, really, I didn't discover something new. It's the way the top players played. If you go back 60 years, there were some players already were playing this way. Today, the majority of the players are playing open stance, which means that you play in the most natural position possible. You don't think of your feet, because you think of your feet, you take away from your hand-eye coordination. So teaching the feet is one of the problems, because it draws the player's attention towards their feet. And that could happen to a pro, and this game can be ruined. So. You need to realize that moving in speed on the court is actually losing your balance. You lose your balance, you know, and then the body goes. You don't want to move your feet first. 
then you're kind of leaving back. So it'd be equivalent um, trying to teach someone exactly how to step. For most people, it'd be equivalent to teaching someone how to run to catch a ball like a football. You wouldn't necessarily think about your feet. You're thinking about catching the ball, and you're just going to get it. Right. So it can really hinder what you're doing with your hands when you're thinking down there. Absolutely. So the first thing to do for a beginner to a pro is don't distract them with the feet. You can create drills, like we had one with a cone moving around like this, that will give you a natural way of moving. But you should not make the player focus on the feet, because otherwise he's also more tense. He's not so relaxed as when he's just not thinking and just moving the way he learned when he was two or three years old. And that is actually the way the pros play. They're not thinking of the feet. They're thinking of their hand and the ball and where they to meet it, to find it, you know, and where they're going to put it. So that is the main difference. I really want to emphasize that. On Federer's forehand, he, he's hitting it so hard, so penetrating, but yet he's got so much spin on it. How does he keep the 